I thought today we'd talk about namespaces because it's something that's a fundamental structural element to Hive's projects and it's a really uh, useful thing. So a namespace is primarily an organizational tool for separating our code into different sections. So if you're used to having a project that just has the on init callback just full of code, um, this will probably be quite useful to you because it will allow you to compartmentalize that code into individual um, sections and also into individual files. And it just makes things a bit more modular so you can manage your code more easily, uh, find bugs, fix problems and reuse code uh, between different projects. So let me show you how we create a namespace. So it's really easy. We just type namespace and then we give it a name. So let's call this one app. And then we put curly braces. And now this is a namespace. So in here we can do things like declare variables and all the other stuff that you do in on init basically. It's just it lives within on init. So if we declare a variable, we'll call it um, my value, and it can be equal to 10. Now if I try and console print this outside of the namespace, so my oh I've misspelled that, let's just create that. My value. So if I try and print that here we're going to get an error because we're outside of the namespace. We're outside of this block of code. So the variable my value isn't available here. So if we wanted to access it outside of the namespace, we actually have to use the namespace name first and then a dot. So it'd be app dot my value. Now if I hit F5, now we get the value printed out. So this is a bit like whenever you're using a function like um, console dot print or content dot make front interface. It's kind of giving you your own sort of class within Hive. So if you're familiar with object oriented programming, you can kind of treat a namespace like a singleton class, but it, it's not really, but you can kind of treat it that way. So I used a reg variable here. And one thing about reg variables is you can only declare 32 of them in your project, but for every namespace, you get an additional 32. So even just for that purpose, they're very useful. Although if you find yourself using all 32, reg variables, you might want to restructure your code a bit. So that's the most basic idea with a namespace. It's just this structural thing and um, a way of compartmentalizing your code. And you can declare anything you want in here. Just treat it like you would on init. So you can have a function in here if you wanted. You can have component references. So if we had a slider there, we can create a callback and this all lives with inside this app namespace. So this function, for example, let's just uh, put a console print hello world in there. So the function does something. So just like we did with the variable, if we wanted to access this function from outside of the namespace, we'd have to write the name of the namespace first and then call the function. And we have multiple namespaces. As far as I know, you can have as many as you like. So I'll have a second namespace. And from this namespace, we can actually call functions in the first namespace. So from here, I could call app.myfunk. But you want to try and avoid this if you can. Try and avoid having one namespace calling another. You generally want to make each namespace sort of self-contained so it's not dependent on any other code. So here we're making my second namespace dependent on there being a namespace called app because if app didn't exist, this function call would fail. So try and avoid this. Sometimes it can't be helped and you need to have one namespace calling a function in another namespace. But if you can avoid it, you should avoid it. In other languages, there are things called interfaces, which are kind of like a name, a third namespace that talks to both namespaces. And you could do that if you want. But I think within highs, you're adding a bit more complexity than you need. So if you do need to access one namespace from another namespace, just, just do it, but try and avoid it in general. OK, so I'm going to delete this second one. And one thing I always like to do is put the namespaces into a separate file. So I've named this namespace with a capital letter. In fact, I do that with all of my namespaces. You can see here actually for my second namespace it starts with a capital letter. And that's just kind of the uh, naming convention I go with. And the reason I do that is because, again, I'm thinking of these a bit like classes. And you can see all the classes in Hives, like content and console, they start with a capital letter. So I'm just trying to follow on from that. So my namespaces have a capital letter as well. It also distinguishes them from, say, an object, because if I had an object 
call something like my app, I would start this with a lowercase letter. So when I'm looking through my code and I see something that's app dot, I, I see the first letter is capital, so I know that this is a namespace, not an object. So that's why I use the capital letter. I'd encourage you to do the same as well, just makes a cleaner code, but you don't have to do that. So I'm going to highlight all of this. I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to go down to here where it says move selection to external file. And this is going to copy our namespace or all the highlighted code into an external file. And we just have to give the file a name. We don't have to give it an extension. Highs will do that automatically. And I always give it the same name as the namespace. So exactly the same. So it's app in this case. And then I'll hit OK. And what Highs does is put our code into an external file, giving it the name app.js, and now it's included that file in our script. So we can access that file just from this drop down now. So there it is, app.js. And now we can work on this separately. So it's just like if we were going to one of these other callbacks, like on note on or on note off, we can now access our file. And if I go to my desktop, so I have this project namespaces tutorial, and this is the project we're currently working in. If I open that in my file browser, if we go to the scripts folder, and we can see app.js has been added for us. And I can just open that in a text editor and you'll see it's just our namespace. So that's what Heiser's done, it's just put it into this file for us. So there's no penalty in terms of performance for using namespaces. Use as many as you want and uh, make frequent use of them. They're very useful to have. I'd recommend you only have one namespace per file though, because it can get confusing if you have a file called app.js and then there's two namespaces in there. But if you wanted to put a second namespace in the the file you could do but i recommend one file per namespace and it just makes it a bit easier to find where things are one thing you can't do is nest namespaces so i can put another namespace inside app and um, let's give it a name my namespace capital m uh, you, you can't do this sort of thing that won't work nesting of namespaces is not allowed one other thing you should avoid is you shouldn't declare var variables in a namespace. And if you've seen my other videos, um, I often talk about vars. You should avoid vars at all costs. And pretty much the only place you should be using them is in standard functions like um, paint routines where you can't use any other type of variable. But if you can avoid using a var, avoid it. But you should definitely avoid using it in a namespace because if we do something like this, my var 10, and then we're outside of the namespace here, and you remember what happened with the reg variable when I tried to print it, it didn't work. But with a var, it leaks into what's known as the global namespace. So if I hit F5, we're actually able to access it here, which we don't want, because the whole point of a namespace is to encapsulate code. So this isn't good. This is um, a variable leaking out of uh, the namespace. So don't use vars. Use regs, use constants or const vars. And if you're inside a inline function, you should be using local variables. So that's pretty much it for what namespaces are and how you use them. And I'd just like to show you one of my projects where I'm using namespaces. And in fact, I use them in all of my projects. If you look at my code on GitHub or Codeberg, you'll see my on init is generally just a series of namespaces or just a series of includes and each one of those refers to a file that's a namespace. So I'm going to show you one of my projects now. So this is a little um, downloader app I created. It's, it's quite a simple project in terms of structure. There's not much to the UI. But if we just have a look at the on init, you can see it's just these includes and each one is a namespace. So I have one called app. I always have one called app and that's just where I declare things that are related to the app. So loading fonts in this case, deferring callbacks, that kind of thing. Um, but my general structure is I'll have one for the app. So the app one there, I'll have one for all my paths. So that's SVG paths. So these are all my different paths for the different icons on the interface. I'll have one for look and feel functions. And these are look and feel functions that I'm sharing between different components. So if I have a look and feel function that applies to all the knobs on the UI, they'll go in this namespace. So here's all the look and feel functions. And then after that, I tend to do one namespace per section of my UI. And it usually matches 
one of the uh, panel names. So I organize my UI into panels. So in this case, I've got one called PNL header. So I should have a namespace with that name. And there it is, header. And then I've got this one called grid container. So there'll probably be one called grid. And yep, there it is. Uh, login. That one, I think, it actually goes in this account one. And this is a login form for users to log into my app. I have one called PNL settings container. And then I have a namespace called user settings. This uh, brings me to uh, an important point as well. I've called this user settings and not settings. And I'll show you why. If I call this settings, if I make a namespace called settings and hit F5, you can see we get this error, legal namespace ID. And this is actually a good thing. It's telling you not to use this. And the reason we're getting an error is because if we go to the scripting API, highs actually has a class called settings. So you can't name your namespace the same as a highs class, because then when you call a function like settings dot, whatever your function is, highs won't know whether it's looking in your namespace or within the settings uh, class. So it'd be the same if I called it engine. So same sort of thing. So you can't give your namespaces the same names as one of the highs classes. So that's why I call this user settings. And um, what else do I have? File picker. So it'll be a file picker one somewhere. There it is. File picker. Update checker spinner splash screen. So each one of these sections of my UI has a matching um, include and the include has a namespace. And I have some others in here that are sort of additional to that, not necessarily linked directly to the UI. Like I have this one called downloader, which does some functions relating to downloading. But if we go and look at, uh, let's see, um, we look at this um, header one. So we can see that's all that's in here. So the namespace is called header, of course, because the file's called header. And all this is, is it's got this uh, PNL header, which is this component here, and it's just uh, drawing a paint routine for it. So there's not much going on in there, but it means if I want to know where the code is for this header, all I have to do is look at the panel name, go, okay, it's, a, it's called PNL header, and then I know where the code for it um, should be found. So it's a very useful organizational tool. And if you have this sort of structure, you could see that I could easily then just take this code for the header, put it in another project, and it will work. And the same for these look and feel functions and paths and whatnot. It just makes it very easy to reuse code, to organize code and find your way around it. And ultimately, that makes it much easier to reduce the number of bugs in your code, find bugs that are there quickly and fix them and maintain your code in general because you can work on it in isolation. So if I know there's a problem with the login panel, I just want to work on the login panel. So I'll go to this account namespace. I'll find the stuff to do with the login panel and I can fix it here. And I don't really have to worry too much that it's going to interfere with other parts of the code because they're all separate and I try to make them not dependent on each other. But they are to some degree. As you can see with this login panel, I'm actually calling a function within the look and feel namespace. And the look and feel namespace and the paths namespace, they're slight exceptions to the rule because they're designed to um, be called from other namespaces. But in general, I try and keep everything separate and self-contained. Okay, I hope you found this useful and I hope that you can use namespaces in your project to make your life easier and uh, help you organize your code. So if you've got any questions or comments, leave them below the video. Please give the video a big thumbs up and click the subscribe button if you haven't and share the video with anybody you think might find it interesting. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.